Coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6, the Oklahoma woman who drove into a crowd during a homecoming parade is facing manslaughter charges. A deadly earthquake rocked Afghanistan and Pakistan earlier today, and the death toll is rising. And a new study has emerged about the dangers of red meat and its link to cancer. Citrus TV starts right now. Beautiful sunny fall day today. We'll expect some rain later on this week. I'll be in the studio coming up. Citrus TV News starts right now. From the Citrus TV studios, this is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Hello and welcome to Citrus TV News Live at 6 for Monday, October 26th. I'm Topher Lane. And I'm Claire Moran and here are tonight's top stories. The man who was hit by a car on Interstate 81 this morning has died. The crash happened shortly after 8.30 this morning. Police were called to the scene near the Court Street exit of I-81. Police say the man hopped over the center median and was struck in the northbound lanes. The man was rushed to Upstate University Hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The northbound lanes of 81 were shut down for about three hours this morning while police investigated. Police still don't know why the man was on the highway in the first place. St. Joseph's Hospital, located on the north side of Syracuse, infected three patients with Legionnaire's disease. One of the cases was fatal. Legionnaire bacteria was found in the water storage tanks. This type of bacteria causes a deadly form of pneumonia. St. Joseph's suspended its tap water use, but lifted that restriction today after the hospital officials found other sources of water were safe to use. Candlelight vigil was held at Hendricks Chapel yesterday to honor all 270 people who died on Pan Am Flight 103 in 1988. This marks the beginning of Remembrance Week, where each year in October, SU remembers the 35 Syracuse students on the flight. Events throughout the week are designed by Remembrance Scholars to raise awareness about the flight and its victims. Tonight, there will be a screening of the documentary My Brother's Keeper by Ken Dornstein, whose brother was killed on the flight. The mothers of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown will speak in Goldstein Auditorium for a discussion called Injustice for All on Wednesday. The sold-out event is sponsored by the National Panhellenic Council of SU. Two CNN anchors will also be on the panel. The panelists will field questions from the moderator as well as from audience members. Syracuse University students were alerted of two sexual assaults near campus on Sunday night. One student reported being grabbed from behind by an unknown male near Brugger's Bagels. Another student saw the victim and was able to help. The other assault happened on 700 block of Euclid Avenue where the student was pulled behind the bushes. The victim suffered a black eye and a bloody lip but was able to kick the suspect and free herself. Neither suspects have been caught. The agenda for the Board of Trustees meeting in November has been released and the board will be voting on the future of the Carrier Dome next month. The Loud House's future is, in part, is a part of the campus plan in Chancellor Kent Siverud's Fast Forward initiative. SU is weighing three big options right now, replacing the current roof as is, installing a new roof while making other improvements, or building a different stadium off campus. Syracuse University is going to the dogs. Well, not really, but a new trend is potentially making the campus more pet friendly. Citrus TV News' Jacob Reynolds has the story. Four-legged friends in university campuses do not normally get along. But a new trend is making it easier for these two to see eye to eye. It's definitely a new trend. My dog and I live off campus, but for a growing number of college students, they're getting comfort pets to help fight ailments such as anxiety and depression. But the problem is, how do they get those pets on campus? Peck Scam says this is a new development in her 16-year career and the need is only increasing. The American College Health Association has noted an increase in feelings of depression, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts in students over the past seven years. You know, based on research and what I know about college students and people in general, um, folks with um, anxiety, depression can benefit from having a comfort animal. Most of the students with these pets live on South Campus where the animals have more space and are not limited to traditional dorm rooms, but comfort animals can come in any form. It, mostly dogs or cats. Uh, we had a snake one year as well. But before you bring your pet to college, it's important to note that any student trying to bring a comfort animal to school must be approved by the Office of Disability Services with an actual medical need. There are about five students with a documented need this year. Having pets running in luck is not, not what we're looking to do right now. This is out of concern for the university property and the animals' well-being. So even though you may start to see more animals on campus, Syracuse University isn't going to the dogs just yet. 
For Citrus TV News, I'm Jacob Reynolds. Coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6, nearly 150 people have died after an earthquake struck Afghanistan. We have the video. And the newest president of Guatemala may have a funny side to him. That and more with news from here and around the world coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6. October 14th, Syracuse University was notified of an off-campus incident via Orange Alert. Just moments after the event, Citrus TV News was already bringing you new information on Periscope and social media. Then we brought nearly an hour and a half of live streaming coverage to students on and off campus via the web. Our own Hunter Signs was at the scene near the shooting, sending us live images of the area under investigation. The following day, reporters were live with the full story. With full team coverage, we kept SU informed with the latest, most accurate information possible. We really are your campus news leader. Coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. Jimmy can't sing, and Tommy can't dance, so we're going to put some hands in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Police say the woman accused of driving under the influence and crashing into a crowd of spectators at a homecoming parade now faces murder charges. 25-year-old Adesha Chambers faces four counts of second-degree murder for a deadly crash at Oklahoma State University. The crash killed four people, including a toddler, a graduate student, and a couple. Dozens were also injured. If Chambers is convicted, she could face life in prison. A man has been arrested in the murder of 18-year-old Zoe Hastings. Dallas police took 34-year-old Antonio Cochran into custody over the weekend for allegedly kidnapping the 18-year-old from a Walgreens parking lot and killing her. Her body was found after officers responded to reports of a car that had crashed into a creek. Cochran's bail has been set at $2.5 million. There's good news for anyone looking at traveling home for the Thanksgiving holiday. Gas prices are still headed down. According to GasBuddy.com, gas prices in the Syracuse area should drop another 10 to 12 cents by this time next month. Lower demand, in addition to a cheaper fuel formula, are to thank for the continued fall dip in fuel prices. The average price of a gallon of gas in Syracuse today is $2.19. It is expected to drop to about $2 by the end of the year. An elderly woman and her son are dead in an alleged murder-suicide case. A 62-year-old man was visiting his 85-year-old mother at a New Jersey assisted living facility yesterday when he allegedly shot her. George Buller then shot himself as a nurse walked into the private room. Buller frequently visited his mother at the nursing home. Police are still investigating. <laughs> A deadly earthquake struck northern Afghanistan today. The 7.5 magnitude quake has caused serious damages in Afghanistan and Pakistan. 180 deaths have already been reported, with 52 of them in Pakistan. The quake's de depth was approximately 132 miles in the Hindu Kush mountain range. The country's chief executive called an emergency meeting to deal with the crisis. Rescue workers are still searching the waters of British Columbia after a tour boat sunk Sunday. Authorities say the boat carried 27 people and at least four died. The boat, named Leviathan, was the second a whale-watching vessel and was traveling off the coast of Tofino. Search coordinators required a military helicopter to join in the search for bodies. Two Canadian Coast Guard vessels were deployed and the search continued after nightfall. 
Tofino is just 2,000 people and, and really everybody knows everybody and as soon as the news went out, especially on marine radio on the VHF, the community of it, boats and people came out and they're right on scene helping in any way they can, pulling survivors from the water and then here down in Tofino when people arrived, the outpouring from the community has been just phenomenal. A former TV comedian who has never held a position in office is the new president of Guatemala. Jimmy Morales won the presidential election on Sunday with an overwhelming number of votes and beat former First Lady Sandra Torres. Despite his lack of government experience, polling showed that Morales had a 68% support in the country. Many voters have shown discontent with Guatemala's political class and hope to seek change through Morales. Central New York will be hit with the remains of Hurricane Patricia. Heavy rain and wind is expected to move into the area late Tuesday night and Wednesday. Rain will become more widespread throughout Wednesday and is expected to accumulate about an inch. But the bigger concern is actually the wind. Wind gusts over 40 miles per hour are expected. But, but will we see some sunshine after the rain in the middle of the week? Citrus TV weather reporter Brittany Muller is here in studio to let us know. Brittany? Yes, Claire, we'll see some sunshine after the rain. And today we had a beautiful fall and sunny day today in the high 40s. The winds are out of the northwest at 7 miles an hour, and this is the average 56 for the time, so we're a little below that. Looking into tonight, we're going to drop down into the 30s. No chance of rain, mostly clear skies with a few passing clouds. And looking at the current temperatures across the U.S., the northern parts of the country, we're in the 30s and 40s. Farther south, we're in the 50s. Parts of Texas are in the 70s. Florida is still in the 80s. And now the severe weather alerts, part of the southeast region of the country. Taking a closer look, there's flood watches and warnings in parts of Louisiana, Texas, and Alabama. Uh, this warning can cause coastal flooding and higher tides up to three to four feet above normal. And there's still more to come. You can see the storm passing through the area, leaving thousands of people left without power. This flood warning is in effect until seven tonight. And back here in Syracuse, tomorrow we're looking about 56 degrees with no chance of rain. Pa clouds will be passing through. Uh, winds will be out of the east at 6 miles an hour. And here, you, here is your weather for the week. Tuesday, 56. Wednesday will be rainy. 90% chance. Uh, 63 degrees. Thursday, 56. Friday, 48. And Saturday, 53 with a 10% chance of rain. So, Brittany, fortunately, it looks like it's staying warm for the time being. Are you worried about snow coming in anytime soon? I'm not really worried about any snow coming anytime. I mean, we probably will get snow with the weeks to come, but not just yet. And big holiday coming up this uh, weekend, yes, Halloween, Halloween. trick-or-treating. What, yes. what kind of costume are they going to be allowed to wear? Do okay. you have to wear a coat? We're going to have to wear a coat, but I would suggest wearing, make sure you have closed toe shoes because it's going to rain. Night at night, yeah, what a disappointment, but it's going to rain, so make sure you stay warm, stay dry, as, as dry as you can be. I'm sure it won't dissuade those very... Uh, um, dedicated yeah, trick dedicated. Oh, yeah, yeah it's definitely yeah, not. not. <laughs> It'll be fun okay. regardless. Yeah. Thanks, Brittany. Okay. <laughs> Coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6, a new study has been released about the possible health effects from eating too much candy. Or red meat, excuse me. And Vice President Joe Biden speaks out about not running for president for the first time since he made the announcement. That and more on the road 2016 coming up after the break. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. I've got a job to do today. I have got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start class, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator.
Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. And hungry hot dog lovers, and between Memorial Day and Labor Day, about 7 billion hot dogs will be consumed in the U.S. With those shocking numbers comes new shocking discoveries. A company that analyzed hundreds of hot dogs say that human DNA was found in 2% of the hot dog samples and in two-thirds of vegetarian samples. Also, 10% of vegetarian products actually contained meat. Despite those findings, Butterball and Hebrew National were ranked the best hot dogs according to the study. Processed meat is also under the spotlight for another reason. A World Health Organization group said that the processed meats, such as bacon or hot dogs, cause cancer. The group also said red meat like beef, pork, and lamb can also cause the disease. According to the group, many studies show links between how eating these foods can cause cancer, but WHO has determined that red meat does actually cause cancer, not that it may cause cancer. The working group, group has classified eating processed meat as carcinogenic to humans. Forty-three years ago, a nine-year-old girl was running for her life during the Vietnam War. Today, Kim Phuc is receiving treatment for serious napalm burns from years ago. Phuc became a symbol of the Vietnam War when a photographer took a picture of her running away from napalm bombs dropped by, from the Vietnamese troops. The photo won a Pulitzer a Prize. She is now 52 years old and is receiving a series of laser treatment to smooth and soften the scar tissue. Phuc will need up to seven treatments over the next nine months. New Jersey Governor and GOP presidential candidate Chris Christie was asked to leave an Amtrak quiet car on a trip back to his home state. After an appearance on Face of the Nation Sunday morning, Christie took an Amtrak train from Washington, D.C. to New Jersey, where passengers complained the governor was being too loud during a conversation he was having on his cell phone. The governor left the car after a conductor asked him to, and he claimed he was, had no idea he was sitting in the quiet car to begin with. In an interview with 60 Minutes on Sunday, Vice President Joe Biden said that he would have run for president, but he decided he could not have won the election. In the joint interview with Dr. Jill Biden, the vice president said that grieving the death of their son, former Delaware Attorney General Bo Biden, was more important than running a presidential campaign. Biden also effectively said he was retiring and that he will never seek a political office again. And a very happy birthday to another important Democratic presidential hopeful. Uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is celebrating her 68th birthday today, and the polls are looking good for Clinton, who, according to an ABC News and Washington Post poll, is dominating the only other viable candidate, Bernie Sanders, 54% to 23%. We would also like to take this opportunity to wish a happy birthday to our very own executive producer, Caroline Davenport, from everyone here at Citrus TV. She's turning 21 today, so have a great birthday, Caroline. Well, coming up on sports, find out how Syracuse earned its weekly loss on the football field while losing its first five-star recruit in program history. You really won't want to miss this. If you see news happening on campus in Syracuse or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Another season of Orange basketball excitement will be here soon. Wisconsin, North Carolina, Notre Dame, and Pittsburgh are all due in the dome. Will you be there when this happens? One, let's it go, hits! Will you be there when Dish happens? Will you be there when Swish happens? And Coach Q wants you there as well, as the women's team looks for its fourth straight NCAA tournament berth. Season tickets are on sale now at the Carrier Dome box office, Qs.com, and one 888 dome -tics. Contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. 
help. I made it. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Well, guys, good news. Everything's returned to normal since the Cubs fell out of the playoffs. According to Rivals and Scout.com, former five-star tight end recruit Chris Clark and the Syracuse football team have decided to mutually part ways. Clark announced his intention to move to Central New York two weeks ago, citing head coach Scott Schaefer's connection with his players. But according to Scout.com, Schaefer focuses on finding the complete recruit that goes beyond the player's talent on the field, leading to the mutual parting. Clark is the second high-profile recruit lost by Schaefer this season after four-star running back Robert Washington III decommitted from Syracuse in August. But the show must go on, however. Under Scott Schaefer and his team of complete recruits, the Orange has never beaten a ranked team. It looked like it had uh, number 25 Pittsburgh right where they wanted them on Saturday at the Carrier Dome, but just like its recruits, Syracuse gave this game away. To give a game away, you have to blow it at first. You got to get a lead, and that's what happened early on. With 9-12 left in the first quarter, Eric Dungey finds Irv Phillips, and he makes a great cut to the end zone, 7-3 SU. But Pitt would strike back, Allison getting his first touchdown of the day. That ties it at 10. With 26 seconds left to go in the second quarter, Eric Dungey would find Steve Ishmael in the end zone. That wouldn't be the only score as regulation ends in the first half with a Chris Blewett field goal. And Pitt would just keep on moving. Another touchdown from Allison. Third down here comes up. It's tied 20-20 here in the fourth quarter. And it's an incomplete pass. The Syracuse defense thinks it's done its job until fourth down. When Pitt Riley Dixon's the Syracuse defense, they somehow convert, get the first down, and it would lead to this Chris Blewett 25-yard field goal. Pitt would win 23-20. Here's what Scott Schaefer had to say following this tough loss. You know, obviously very disappointing to come up short again two weeks in a go, uh, two weeks in a row, and... Uh, you know, it's, football's a game of inches. It's one play here, one play there that can make the difference in the outcome of, of a ball game, and, and we saw that. It's not like we're being dominated, you know, out there. I could see if we were losing every game by two touchdowns or, you know what I mean? So it's not like we're being outplayed and we're just not as talented. We got ballers out there. And we've been close. I mean, this team's great. I love them. I love being around these guys. So we're right there. Uh, we just got to, you know, keep working hard and improve it every day. Well, nothing's going too well right now for Syracuse football, but according to Citrus TV's Taryn Vericchio, the players and coaches still have confidence after four straight losses. Taryn? After two weeks on the road, SU came home to the Dome, but let another game go in the last seconds against Pitt. Now down three and four, quarterback Eric Dungy says the turnaround must first come from him. It starts with me. I got to make good decisions and you know be smart with the ball because we got a great. I mean, Steve, Briz, Irv, we got playmakers all around. Even after four straight losses, Coach Schaefer and the players are staying positive about the future. We can't be soft. You got to fight the good fight, push forward, be a good example, model the way, have a good dinner tonight, drink a beer. Come back into the morning and have a great, a great Sunday. Still got faith that we can accomplish all our goals that we had, uh, that we have ahead. You know, I feel like we're getting better. You know, we just have to uh, cut out those little mistakes and just keep executing like we could. Because when we get it rolling, we're really good. SU heads back on the road this Saturday to face Florida State. Taryn Vericchio, Citrus TV. Thanks, Taryn. Let's move on to some positive SU news. Women's soccer has tried something different in its last three games, not wearing the color orange. And who knew that strategy actually works? If you take a look right here in the, fifth, in the 23rd minute, Sheridan Street 
finds the net, and that's all Syracuse would need. It'd be a one nothing victory for the Orange. 3-0 in those pink jerseys, and really what it all came down to was their second half defense. Wake Forest's shots were minimalized as Maddie Brock's shot went high right there. Coley Cor goalie Courtney Brosden comes all the way to the top of the box on this play um, in the 56th minute and makes a tremendous save. Syracuse holds on for the 1-0 lead. Here's Syracuse head coach Phil Wedden with what he had to say after this one. Their strength is their midfield and you know they have some exceptional midfielders we wanted to bypass their midfield and play in the flanks a little bit more today because you know out of respect for them really get away from their better players so uh, yeah we wanted to go wide with the ball um, and also that's where we have our most speed our most dynamic players so that was our hope and we're on to the nfl rex ryan and the buffalo bills forgot to change the batteries in their headset on sunday morning which was definitely the only reason why they lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars in London. E.J. Manuel still in for Tyrod Taylor, finished with 298 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. And the Jets were the latest victims of Tom Brady's wrath, falling 30-23 to to the Patriots. Brady threw for 355 yards and two touchdowns while running for another. Darrell Rivas didn't have a single interception in this one, and some are blaming his Super Bowl ring from getting in the way of catching the ball. Finally, the Giants beat the Patriots 27-20, but you probably assumed that anyway. Dallas starting quarterback Matt Castle threw for three interceptions in the loss. And the Ravens and the Cardinals will round out Week 7 of the NFL season tonight, facing each other on Monday Night Football. The Cardinals are looking to avenge its loss last week against the Steelers, while the Ravens are realizing that its long-term contract with quarterback Joe Flacco probably wasn't a good idea. So those four straight losses don't look so good on a coach's record. What do you think is in store for Scott Schaefer? Well, I think combined with the Chris Clark news that came out of today that he prioritizes the complete recruit over what would be their first five-star recruit in history, uh, it does not spell well for him. He needs to pick up the pace. The only way he saves his job now is if he wins six games and makes a bowl, which probably won't happen. All right, thanks, Chris. Coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6, a man in Alabama might have a pretty big late fee for not returning a library book. After 63 years, we'll be right back. Huntington! Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, where's that bear? <laughs> What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Welcome back. A man in Alabama just returned his library book this week, but it was 63 years late. Bobby. Best I can remember. And I just kidded with her. I said, I'm just a slow reader. Bobby Rice was issued a $1,500 fine for keeping the book past its due date. The high school he had, he had the book from waived the fine, though in spite of Rice's great excuse. And that's all the time we have for Citrus TV News Live at 6. Make sure you're back tomorrow for SA Today with Josh Bazan. And that's all the day's top stories in news, weather, and sports. We're always on Twitter at Citrus TV. I'm Topher Lane. And I'm Claire Moran. Have a great night, Syracuse. <laughs>